Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Letizia, and I'm one of the pastors here at Park Road Presbyterian Church. So glad that you can join us in this way online uh, as we begin something new together. Uh, we are this fall, for about six weeks, going to be journeying together on what we're calling a theological focus, taking one uh, theological subject and spending some extra time outside of our typical gatherings on Sunday mornings uh, to explore what it means to think theologically about a subject, what it means to think biblically about a subject. And so for the next six weeks, we're going to be focusing on um, a particular subject. And this particular subject is generosity and stewardship. Generosity and stewardship. And now some of you might already be hearing that and thinking to yourself, oh great, is this going to be about money? And the answer is yes and no. Um, when we consider the subjects of generosity and stewardship, we will indeed talk about money and resources and the role that money plays in our lives and the different resources that we accumulate and bring together, how that is used within the Christian life. But more than that, we want to be talking about the subject of generosity and stewardship, and particularly looking first at the generosity of God and the stewardship of his creation, which he has called us to as his people. So how are we going to do this? How is this theological focus going to take shape over these uh, six weeks or so? Well, each week we'll be doing this. We'll be releasing a video talk of some length. Uh, this is just meant, again, to bring some content into your life that you can engage at different points during your week, uh, whatever your schedule might be, on the way to work, on the way home from work, at home. You can access it um, on YouTube, or you can listen to it in a podcast form. Uh, you can find it on all of our social accounts or access it through our uh, website at parkroadprez.org. And then each week, also, we're hoping to release a, a blog post or an article that will kind of be a companion piece to the video portion of the theological focus. And what we're hoping with this project is just, again, to experiment with different forms of content and how you can be engaging us here at the church, how we can be resourcing and helping to disciple all of our people in different ways. And so this is uh, an idea to help uh, accomplish those things. So laying all that down as our foundation for this theological focus, let's then turn our attention to session one, and in particular, um, this important uh, subject of God's generosity to us, and then our beginning to think of the stewardship that we are called to in response of God's generosity to us. So let's first turn our attention uh, towards God. And it's important to start there because if we are to think theologically and biblically um, about generosity and stewardship in our own lives, then we first should consider the generosity of God and in particular, his work in creation, what he has done in creating all things, that the Lord, uh, who has brought us into relationship with himself through Jesus, he is the creator and sustainer of all things. And so the first point that we want to consider uh, this week is God's ownership of creation that God is the owner, the creator of all things, of his creation. And this, of course, is a fundamental point of Christian theology. God is the creator. He is the sole ruler and Lord over all things, over all creation. We can think of Psalm 19, uh, a soaring passage which just um, proclaims the handiwork of God in creation, creating the heavens and the earth. We could think of the opening accounts of the book of Genesis, the first few pages of the entire Bible where we watch the creator at work. The Bible is full of pictures of God's work in creation, 
Um, but we also believe that what motivates God towards this great work of creation is not um, creating because of he is doing it out of a certain kind of lack or a loss, meaning God did not decide to create all things and create the world and the heavens and the earth and you and I because he was missing something or that there was something lacking in his life or experience. That's not why God has created all things. Um, humanity didn't need, God didn't need humanity. And so creation then is not born out of a lack Creation is born out of God's generosity. You and I, all of the works of creation flow out of God's incredible generosity and love. And creation itself is a gift, an act of God's generosity. That's why at different points in the Bible, um, God has to remind individuals that he does not rule out of missing something or out of a lack. He'll say things like, do you think that I need this from you? Do you think that I don't know this already? I am the creator. I am the Lord of all. Uh, if you have a Bible or if you have a device and you want to look at this passage with me, you can. We're looking at Psalm 50 in the first uh, 12 or 13 verses. Let me just read it to you. This really illustrates this idea of both God's generous creation, creating acts, and then kind of the back and forth between humanity and our feeling, our temptation to feel like God owes us something. And this is how he often speaks to his people when we are responding in that way. Psalm 50 verse 1 says, The mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets from Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him, and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Verse 5, gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. I bring no charges against you concerning your sacrifices or concerning your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. Here's the important part, verse 9. I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? God clearly here is saying, I own everything. Creation is mine. Therefore, I don't need things from you. This is my gift of generosity to you. And so time and again, the Lord is touting his sufficiency. There is nothing that you or I can bring um, that the Lord does not already have. There's nothing that we as humanity can do that would take away from God's overruling presence throughout all of his creation. There's nothing that we could do that would take away from his eternal sufficiency in himself. God's creation is his. It's his to create, it's his to protect, and it's his to use for his purposes and for his glory. Also, it means that everything that we have then, uh, everything that you and I have been given, whether we think it's a lot or whether we would like a little bit more and we think it's a little, whether the world would consider, consider you to be wealthy or whether the world would consider you to be poor, everything we have comes from God. It is all his. Um, there are a couple of other 
scriptures that strongly point to this. Think back, uh, we just completed a sermon series a couple of months ago through the Old Testament book of Job. But think back when God finally answers his servant Job and says, Who has a claim against me that I should pay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. Or think about these words that God uh, says to his people, the Israelites, in the book of Deuteronomy. He says, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. All that we have, all that we can do, comes from the Lord. God has complete ownership over his creation. Therefore, God doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our resources. He doesn't need payment in order that he can sustain himself or his work. Instead, what God is looking for and what we are called to bring is our worship. It's our acknowledgement of his complete ownership and control of creation and all things. When we begin to think about the subject of generosity in this way first, kind of really zoning, zooming in to God's generosity in creation and then how he deals with us his people, uh, we are going to begin to think properly about how we are to consider the things that he has given to us, the things that he has blessed us with, and the resources that we have in the world to use for his glory. Unfortunately, sin and selfishness often keeps us from coming to this zoomed-in view of God's generosity and goodness to us. And what begins to happen is that as sin begins to kind of burrow its way into our hearts in these subjects, we begin to think that God does owe us something. Uh, We begin to dovetail into a temptation of maybe even thinking that God might not be in control over all things in his creation, or he might not be in control over my life, or he's not coming through for me in the way that I think he should. We've all been there. We've all wrestled with those thoughts. Um, We've all had our eyes taken off of the generosity of God because of sin, because of selfishness because we think that we know how God should provide for us when in fact all of the scriptures tell us that God knows what we need and God always provides exactly what we need. Um, Throughout the entire Old Testament, the people of Israel struggled to believe this very truth. Their sin and their lack of belief would continually lead them to stray and think that God owed them, that God had promised them something that he was not delivering to them there and in that moment. And they wondered, would he continue to take care of us? And they stray away from him and they begin to attach themselves to another God of some kind, believing that in that moment, that God, that person, whatever it may be, would meet their present needs. The problem is, all the while, God was providing for them. God was taking care of them. You can look back throughout the history, and if they knew their own history well, they would have seen time and time again God's provision for them. So before we can think about generosity working itself out in our lives or stewardship, which is the managing or taking care of what God has given to us, we need to think first about God's generosity. And it starts by looking at God's ownership over all of creation. But the second point for this week is looking at God's ownership of his people. 
God's ownership of us. Um, it's important that we see God as the owner and ruler over all creation, but we need to see ourselves as part of that creation. That God, not only is he in charge of the oceans of the world, of the way physics work in the natural world, but God is in charge of you and me, of our personal lives. He owns us in that way, if you will. Look with me at this verse from 1 Corinthians in chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. The Apostle Paul writes, For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. And again, as we said earlier, all that we have has been given by God. Everything good in our lives comes from him. Our abilities, uh, our history, and our experiences, our education, all of that has come to us as a gift from God. We would not be where we are today without God intervening in our lives um, countless time after time after time. And far more important than all of those things that we listed or we could think about, the many different blessings or temporary things that God has given to us or bringing into our lives, far more important than that is that God has given us himself in his son, Jesus Christ. God has laid claim to us. He has purchased us as his people, purchased us by the blood of Jesus. We are now bought as his people. And that is the gift of the gospel that comes to us, that we embrace. And it truly is a gift. There's nothing that we have done to earn it. There's nothing that we could do um, to hold on to it more tightly. There's nothing certainly that we've done to deserve this gift. It's a gift freely given to us. And that even um, in our receiving of it. It is the work of God's Spirit helping us to receive that gift of the gospel. And so all of this, including the gift of Jesus, the gift of faith, is given. And we receive it out of uh, God's generosity and his uh, wonderful blessing given to us. Just like we said a bit earlier, though, like ancient Israel and the often straying away or the temptation to wonder if God is truly in control or taking care of us, we deal with that as well. Um, we can go not too long, hours, minutes <laughs> even, wondering if we have all that we need if God is truly going to continue to be generous to us, is God truly in control of my life? Does God truly know what I need? That is what we wrestle with. Um, but think of it this way. What if someone loaned you $100,000? It's a significant amount of money that is life-changing in many ways. Would we then turn around and resent giving them five bucks if they needed it? You've been given $100,000. Would we then the next day something happens, they need to borrow, resent giving $5 to that person? Of course not. When you borrow something from someone else, uh, that you're in need of something, they have it, you borrow it, what do you do? You often take very good care of that item because it doesn't belong to you. You know that you're going to be giving it back to that person, and so you want to give it back to them, what do we say, in better condition even than when we received it. We are God's children, and because of that, we want to 
embrace what God has given to us, but see it all as God's. Whatever he has given to you, whatever he has given to me, it's not mine. God owns me through his son Jesus, and whatever he's given to me is, in fact, his. And so if we were to truly embrace that, it is going to change so much about the way we look at our lives and the resources in our lives, our money, our time, our possessions. And those are going to be some of the questions that we look forward to uh, reflecting on and engaging with in the weeks to come. It'll raise some significant questions, a couple of questions like these. Would, in fact, um, you treat things differently if they belong to someone else? And just the example we've just said about borrowing something, if we believe that God has given us these things, these things that are present in our life, but they are his, does that change the way we think about how we receive it, about how we would use it? What if we were to truly embrace the reality that all we have is owned by God? Our home, our clothes, our families, our money, our time. What if we all saw that? as God's, not ours, but God's, because we are his also. And so to really begin to think theologically and biblically about generosity and stewardship, we have to begin with God. And that's what we've attempted to do in this first session, that what he has given to us, which is everything, is his. And most of all, the gift of his son, Jesus. That is the zenith. It is the, the, the pinnacle of God's generosity to us, that he would give himself to us in Jesus. And so perhaps this week, we can begin this short journey um, before moving on further to think about how we will use the things that God has given us in this life. We can reflect further on God himself as the creator. We can see creation as it's, uh, it being a generous gift from God. We can see Jesus as the most generous gift that we could ever receive from God. And then all these other things in our lives, these different aspects, these different blessings and gifts, everything if we can begin to reflect and see them as gifts from God, not only gifts from God, but that they are his to begin and to end with. From there, then, we're going to be in a much better place to begin to think about how we use these gifts, these resources, how we can be generous with what God has given to us, how we can steward the gifts that God has given to us, how we can steward creation, the gifts that God has given to the world. So that's where we'll stop for today. Um, this week, I want you to look out for um, another uh, blog post or article that we'll be releasing that will kind of be a companion piece to this video session. And then we'll look forward to being back together next week for session two of our fall theological focus on generosity and stewardship. We'll see you then.